Dr. Evans, we've got a rather international flavor going on right now. And so Janelle from New Zealand asks a schwannomatosis question. I've heard that schwannomatosis skips generations. Uh, does this mean that our great, great, great grandchildren could possibly get schwannomatosis? Or is it more along the lines of finding cousins with schwannomatosis? Well, I mean, when we talk about conditions skipping a generation, what we're really saying is, is that you, an individual inherits the faulty gene, whatever causes the condition, and is unaffected and passes on the faulty gene, and there is a risk to their children. Now, it would be very unusual, with, even with a condition like schwannomatosis, which can be very mild, for it to skip three or four generations. So at most, you'd expect it to be one generation skipped. Um, and certainly, we wouldn't be expecting to see it in your great-great-grandchildren if all the intervening individuals were unaffected. So it's important to realize that skipping the generation doesn't mean that the gene skips the generation and then reappears. It means that the gene, is, the gene fault is there. It's just that individuals don't suffer the manifestations of it. And actually, if you were to carry out MRI screening on individuals, you would almost certainly see benign schwannomas that weren't actually causing a problem. Yes. And obviously, if you have a gene test like SMART-B1, then you can just do the test. If individuals haven't inherited it, that's the end of the line. It can't be passed down if the gene fault hasn't been passed down. As before, your, your research touches seemingly all three manifestations of ENF. Um, from what you've been able to witness, what are the benefits, I guess, of researching one, and then how does that ultimately benefit another form of ENF? Well, the obvious biggest benefit in terms of overlap is between schwannomatosis and NF2 because primarily the Schwann tumors, the schwannomas in schwannomatosis still have faults, abnormalities in the NF2 gene. So while the primary driving event that causes those tumors is SMART-B1 or some other gene, um, the tumors themselves are still primarily due to loss of NF2 function. So if you come up with a treatment for schwannomas in NF2, almost certainly it's going to work in schwannomatosis. And, and that's already being shown now, I think, with Avastin treatment, that Avastin treatment works on schwannomas in NF2, well, not all tumors, but in a bunch of tumors in NF2, and it, it, it looks as though it's going to work in schwannomatosis. So that's the most obvious overlap. But the bottom, bottom line is, is that all three conditions, the primary cell that's problematic is the Schwann cell. So uh, learning about the Schwann cell in one condition is going to give you clues in, in other conditions. Although, uh, let it be clear that NF1 really is a very different condition to NF2 and schwannomatosis. Excellent. Thank you very much.